Hey, welcome to an episode of MLM Renegade. Today, guys, we're going to talk about something that's really important for all sales, direct sales, software sales, cell phone sales. No matter what, you are always selling something. And one of the things you're always going to get is objections. So here's the million dollar question. How are network marketers like us, who've tried everything their upline ever suggested to be successful and yet still struggled, who grew up with technology and aren't stuck in the 20th century? How are we supposed to grow our downlines in our bank accounts and yet still have time for real life? My name is J.R. McKee. Join me as we explore how to use 21st century learning and technology to grow our downlines and build lasting wealth. Simply put, this is MLM Done Different. Welcome to MLM Renegade. All right, guys, welcome back. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this topic, objections. You know, in my day job, I find that I, I get to handle these all the time. And, uh, you know, I read a book, gosh, it's been a couple of years ago now, from by Daniel Pink called To Sell is Human. And, you know, I really liked this book because it brought out the fact that in my core belief is that you are always selling something. Always. You're selling your ideas, you're selling influence, you're selling how you interact with other people, how people trust you, whatever it is, you're always selling. And when people get that idea, they start to not be afraid of it so much. And and that's one of the things that I've really found myself with a desire to teach is that selling isn't scary. Selling shouldn't be scary. Being able to be proactive and in front of people is not a bad thing. Inherently, it's actually a very good thing. And so I highly recommend that book. Again, it's called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink. But over this weekend, uh, my wife and I went out uh, looking for, for a new car. Uh, now, I should say that I love looking for cars, but I hate car shopping. Uh, car salesmen generally bug me a lot. Thankfully, I have a couple of friends who are good salesmen who happen to sell cars. And, and, and they've been able to help me find great deals on, on automobiles. Now, the moral of the story is we're not buying a new car because it's probably not a good idea right now. And we've, we, the, uh, the little kid inside us spent Saturday looking at cars, looking at all kinds of different uh, SUVs. We want to get, my, my wife wants to get rid of the mom van. But we, the adult in us finally came out and said, no, we don't need that. The van is paid for. It's paid off. Like, you know, d worry about something else right now. So, but my friend was very helpful in guiding us without being pushy. And I found, especially over, gosh, over more than two decades in, in sales, that there's, there's three items that you are always selling. Okay. There are only three items things that you are selling. You are selling health, you are selling wealth, or you are selling relationships. Those are the only three things. Now you say, but what, what JR, what if I'm what if I'm selling lawnmowers? Well, you're selling a lawnmower to showcase your wealth because you have a nice yard. Or you're selling a lawnmower to showcase your relationships because you don't want your your the people around you, your neighbors, to hate you because you've got three foot grass in your front lawn. Okay? Health, wealth, and relationships are the only things that you're selling. And I'm gonna do another podcast episode about specifically those three things. But today we're gonna go to the opposite side. And we're gonna talk about things that stop people from buying. Things that are objections, okay? And objections also generally circumscribe into three general areas. They are vehicle-based, they are internal-based, or they are external-based. So let me give you an example. Vehicle-based. Will this car work for me, for my family? Internal-based. Can I really afford to use this car? External-based. Will I have enough money? Okay, or vehicle-based. Is this car going to be able to get my family around to where I want to be? Internal-based. Am I going to look good in this car? External-based. You know, I, I, I really I don't have a mechanic that I can trust to take care of this vehicle. Okay, 
vehicle, internal, external. So basically the way that it's getting done, whether you can actually do it and whether there's something outside of you that is that, that, that's stopping you from taking, from taking that step. And so when we're, when we're looking at objections with customers, with team members, with people who you're trying to negotiate with, no matter what it is, it's going to be able to become circumscribed into one of these three. Now, a lot of times, spoiler alert, you'll actually get all three. First, it'll be vehicle. And then be like, oh, well, you know, I don't know. And that'll be internal. And then, oh, but what about this? And that'll be external. It happens all the time. Now, if you're able to work through those objections, at the other side becomes a sale. So some common vehicle-based objections, okay? Will this work? Okay, I sell software. Oftentimes, that's exactly the question. Well, Will it work? Will it do what I need it to do? Will it function the way that I need it to? Now, will it deliver the results that are promised? Okay, the software that I'm selling currently is for governments. And so we want to be able to uh, shorten and, and improve the interactions of citizens of cities with their city governments. And so is it going to reduce what is it going to produce that result? Now, will it will the person or the sales rep be able to deliver the results promised? Okay, that's one that happens an awful lot. And that's one of the ones that uh, used car salesmen get, get dinged for regularly because they seem to offer the world. They seem to want to just tell you that, of course, everything is going to be okay and it's going to be wonderful. And the problem with that is that we simply don't know sometimes. And so we need to understand that even a little bit better. But so if you have complete honesty and integrity in what you're selling and you believe in what you're selling, that one's really easy to get past. Another vehicle base. It looks like a scam. <laughs> How often do we get this in network marketing? Okay. Is that it looks like a scam or the next one, it's too good to be true, right? And so often, especially amateur salespeople, direct sellers, network marketers, whoever, who try and hype something and sell it, actually do it a disservice. You never want to overhype. Now, you can be excited about something. You can be excited about results. You can be excited about the opportunity that you see. But don't overhype things because that just sets people up for for failure, and that's where some of these vehicle-based objections come in. Now, another one might be, I tried something similar and it didn't work, so why should this? Previous experience, right? Humans are programmed to not hurt themselves. We, we look for survival of the species. We look for survival of our feelings, right? So we are programmed not to want to hurt. And so this one's a big one because hey, I tried this once, it didn't work, why is it going to this time? And maybe there's a new issue, there's a new way of doing things, you know. In my own network marketing business, sales funnels is a new way of doing things. Now, is it easy? Heck no. But it does give us an opportunity to get past this particular vehicle-based objections. That sounds complicated. That's what I run into with, with funnels, really, because they can be a little bit complicated. You need to be able to pre-frame your conversation so that you're starting to knock out some of these objections. It sounds too simple. The opposite is true as well. Is it valuable enough? Is it worth my time to, to invest my time to be able to get this potential result? Now, internal based obje objections. Will I be able to do this? That's a, a personal one. Will I be able to? And as a salesperson, you get to pump them up and tell them how, of course, they'd be able to. Is there a fear of doing it? You know, in network marketing, we run across people all the time who don't want to talk to their friends and family. They don't want people to know that they're working a network marketing business because of the stigma that's out there. So that's that's a very real one. They're self-conscious. Some of the same, right? They they don't uh, they don't feel comfortable talking to other people. Now, it's really interesting to see some of the, some of my mentors in this space. Um, two in particular. You got Russell Brunson. And you've got Rob Sperry. Now, Rob specifically works on network marketing. And Russell is specifically in the funnel world, but he also does network marketing. These two guys are huge introverts. Yes, introverts. They would much rather go sit in a room by themselves 
than be in front of 5,000 people. But guess what they both do? They force out their inner introvert and, and, and they, they put on a play for themselves. They put on, they become a character and that character is able to engage with people. That self-consciousness that they needed to banish in order to create that character was a huge thing for them. And it's frankly, it's, that's one of those obstacles that becomes the way and that they can draw power from. Now, another internal, I don't know where to start. Or I don't know what direction I'm going. You know, Those are things that we need to be able to provide. Direction. Tell people where square one is and start from there. They don't know enough. Well, you can, te- you, can, you can teach that up. I don't have the skills needed. Now, this may be true. But again, these are things that can be learned. Skills can be learned. I've never done anything like this before. Now, just because you've never done anything like this doesn't mean you shouldn't do something like this, right? So that's a, a common one that we can that we can get past quickly. But again, it goes to insecurity, and those what in, our internal based objections are is really internal insecurities. Now, finally, external based obje- objections. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough. Insert your favorite resource here. Okay, there's always going to be one of these out there. And here's a little trick, or here's a little belief that you have to carry with you. It's not about the money. It is not about the money. I know people in third world countries who have joined network marketing companies and literally sold couches and furniture in order to have the money to purchase a kit or to get into the business because they saw the vision. Okay, that's this this external. It has to trump your your. Your vision has to trump these external objections. The timing isn't right, okay? I love it when I have a friend of mine right now who's actually launching a network marketing company. Uh, it's a CBD oil focused. Uh, you know, I wish him all the luck in the world. But I was having a conversation with another mentor of mine uh, who's actually been on, John Melton. Um, and he was. we were talking about how silly it is to jump in with a brand new company because there hasn't been anybody to blaze the trail to fix all the kinks to to work through those things now the network marketing company that my wife and i work with has been around for like over 30 years it's been around forever and a lot there's a lot of very successful people who've reached that now some people would say oh you missed the boat because you weren't there 30 years ago i'm like yeah not, not really because i know of some people who were there 30 years ago and they flamed out they washed out most businesses, most businesses, okay, not just network marketing, most businesses do not last five years. Like 95% of them fail. And so most of the time, the best money in network marketing is actually for the business, not for an individual who's just getting started. Now, of course, you can start out there, but it still requires the same amount of hard work and dedication in order to get that launched. So Another one might be, I don't have a following or an audience or a list, right? Okay, those are things that can be generated. Those are things that you can create. You know, I started Video Renegade, my, my video downloader, with no list at all. And and recently actually just had to upgrade my autoresponder because my list was getting too big. That's a happy, co- a happy problem to have. So you can start from nothing and grow in any business. And I don't have the support, okay? This one can be difficult. You have to, especially as you're helping people along this journey, you have to show them that you are their support system, okay? That is a major, major obstacle that you that you have to overcome. All three of these, vehicle, internal, and external-based objections, have roots in reality. But most of those roots are based in fear and ignorance, Let me say that again. Most of these objections are based in fear and ignorance. I guarantee you, as you go through each one of these, you have a response or an answer why that objection shouldn't be paid attention to. You've gotten it from your upline leaders. You've gotten it from a sales training that you did ages ago. You've gotten it from other people that you've heard who've answered similar questions. Okay, All objections have been heard. There are no new objections. There are no new objections, and they all circumscribe into these three areas, vehicle, internal, external. When you can look at them in that regard, when you can look at them in that function that, okay, what kind of a, 
what kind of an objection is this? And then go to your bag of tricks so that you can know how to respond to it. Now, when you get to objection handling, uh, you know, 501, if this is a college course, right, you get to, to your advanced objection handling, what you're going to find is you start to handle objections before they're even posed. Now, I have kind of a funny memory, but when I worked in, uh, th I worked my way through college, and I worked selling cell phones, and I got really, really good at troubleshooting cell phone problems. Hint, turn it off and turn it back on. We'll fix like 90% of your problems. But people would come in and be like, oh, hey, I'm having trouble doing such and such on my phone. But what would happen is they would come in and they would hand me their phone and I'd be like, okay, tell me what's going on. And while they're telling me what's going on, and this is, you know, this is the early, this is before 2010, right? This is the mid, the mid 2000s. Um, I would actually take and pop the back off of their phone, take the battery out of their phone, put it back in, put the back back on and restart the phone. And they'd tell me, oh, well, it's not doing this. I mean, and then I would hold the phone up and be like, you mean this? And they're like, well, how did you fix that? Okay. I knew how to objection handle ahead of time. I knew that whatever, that the majority of things that were going wrong, I was going to be able to handle. And it happened all the time that literally I was able to handle their problem inside of two minutes. And I'd educate people at the same time and tell them, hey, look, your phone is essentially a computer. And when your computer acts up, you restart your computer. Same thing with the phone. And that knowledge and that, uh, that truism holds true today. When you're handling objections, you can start to actually, in your, in your copy, I just finished Copywriting Secrets, uh, fantastic book, highly recommend, uh, but when you're writing copy for a sales letter or a Facebook post or whatever you're using, when you're writing that copy, you can start to knock out, point out those objections ahead of time and then tell them why, that's in, why that one doesn't count. You know, you can say, oh, well... You know, uh, you know, this has worked for a hundred other people, and and of course you'll be able to do this because I will be leading you all every step of the way. But when people actually get to the objection phase of their of their thought process, you've already answered those questions. That's creating these big dominoes to knock over all the little ones along the way, and that is a key to all objection handling. And it's an important skill to pick up and learn and learn how to use because you'll be able to use it in your everyday life, in your relationships with people around you. You're going to be able to, um, you're going to be able to help. I'm going to be able to show my wife that I love her because I took out the trash and took her car to get the oil changed, right? Those were things that I knew that she needed done. Whatever it is, you're going to be able to start to see what that, that one thing is that you can knock out a lot of other objections. So you guys, objections are not to be feared. Objections are to be handled. When somebody has an objection, they're actually thinking, okay? Now, there are many knee-jerk reactions, but when you can knock out those knee-jerk reactions ahead of time, now all of a sudden people actually are starting to think about what it is that you're selling and how that might affect them, and that is a good thing. If you can use that and leverage that to actually become stronger, and as you get new objections, you can figure out how to best in engage with those and help other people with them as well. So, you guys, that's what I've got for today. Um, apologize, we missed last week. Uh, it's, you know, uh, life life happens, new job happens. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm excited to get going. I've actually been putting together a ton of content that we're going to get together. Um, coming soon, actually, we have um, Jeff Griffin, who is a motivational speaker. He's actually a member of the Utah Wheel and Jazz. He's wheelchair bound, and uh, he's going to talk a little bit about that. And the guy's incredible. I've never met somebody so positive about life in general. Uh, I'm really excited to have him join us. So, you guys, that's coming soon. Also, I've got some uh, some more uh, interviews with people who I think are going to be. It's going to be a positive uh, a positive experience. So, you guys have a great one, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks for listening, and please remember to subscribe. And if you loved us, leave us an awesome review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you consume your podcasts. Now, if you'd like some free training for your team on how your recruiting efforts can be bettered and brought into the 21st century, go to podcast.mlmrenegade.com and get your copy of the Renegade Recruiting Kickstarter.